Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some phasers and seeing which one of them performs the best with a beam array setup. So I know that there are many, many different flavors of phaser weapons out there. However, I am specifically going to be focusing on ones that I feel have a larger battle impact than most of the other ones out there. There's a lot of phasers that just have a 2.5% proc on them, and the proc basically has like no battle impact. So we're going to be focusing on the ones that stand out a bit more, that have a better proc than normal, that have a higher proc chance, or have simply replaced a proc with a fixed stat boost. So I'll be focusing on the advanced phasers, the agony, crafted phasers, obliviating, pulse phasers, and sensor-linked phasers. For the testing environment, I am using the triple test server with the exact same build on my World Razor for each of these. All of the weapons are rolled to crit D damage with damage times four. And in the case of the pen weapons, one of those damage modifiers is swapped over to the pen mod. So if I hop over in game here, I have my World Razor set up sitting right behind the test ship over on the triple test map. And what I did for each of these tests is I would go in, put the six beams on that I was testing with. I would set all my weapons to auto fire. I would start up my STO combat meter, have the real time parser going so that I could see a timer of how long I was in combat. And I would just right click on the target and let the weapons auto fire for 15 minutes. And I did this with each of the different types that I'm going through and testing. When I saw on the real-time parser that the 15 minutes was about up, I would go in game and uh, turn the auto fire off and manually fire the last cycle or two if needed. And by doing that, I got all of the t eight tests that I did to have about the same attacks number. And once, an attack, once I finished one test, I just went in, swapped the beam arrays around to the next set that I wanted to test without moving my ship around, without leaving the map. So everything was in the same exact position. Head back to the PowerPoint. And I hit no buffs when I was doing this. I literally just set the weapons to auto fire. I right clicked on the target to start firing. And then I tabbed out of the game for 15 minutes. So. There was no damage, bo damage boost being hit throughout this. This was just auto fire from the weapons. And a quick note. So as I said, I'm running six of each of these weapons. And you'll note that I am not running the Terran Task Force on the build in these tests. The, the Terran Task Force beam array is without a doubt the single best beam array in the game. You can only run one of them though. And it's a really good beam, but the thing about it is that its main perk is that it scales up the damage it does as the target loses hit points. I'm sitting in a, in a test map shooting a static target that's locked at 100% HP, so this thing isn't going to perform well compared to the other beams that I have on. And as such, I've just opted to completely remove it from the build for this test. If I go back in game here, you see that I have two empty slots. I figure, you know, one of these on a normal build would be the Terran, and then the other would be, you know, like a torpedo of some sort, I think is what most people would do. So um, I'm just testing each of these with just the six beam arrays of each type, and that will give us a good idea of how each of them stacks up against each other. So I also put up a predictions poll the other day, and the majority of you, voted for Agony Phasers as being the best, followed by Advanced Phasers, Pulse Phasers, and then for the fourth option, the Standard or Fleet Phasers won out. Um, now, I did not include some options on here, like Sensor Links, just because I didn't have room. I should have made the fifth option like listed as Other and then said to specify in the comments, but it is what it is. But you guys voted as Agony as the best option, so that is what I'll take a look at first. Now, if you want to see, if you want to take another prediction, you know, we'll drop down below what you think the, the best phasers are going to be here before we get too far into the video, because I think there's going to be uh, some, some surprises throughout this video. 
And the first surprise is that Agony Phasers are not as good as you think. You see, the Agony Phasers are by far the most overhyped weapons that probably exist in this entire game. And the reason is because the tooltip for them is extremely, extremely misleading. A lot of people think that these have a dot that goes off every time you fire one of these weapons, when in fact, it is just that Cryptic made a typo in the tooltip, which, you know, that, what a surprise there. But this dot is actually part of the 2.5% chance, uh, the 2.5% proc there. So these Agony Phasers are not as good as you think they are, because that dot is part of the proc, which does not go off that often. So in the... I ended up running the agony test twice because the numbers in the first test ended up being so much lower than the other tests that I thought something went wrong. So I reran the test and got similar numbers. And in both tests, the agony phasers underperformed. And the weapon proc there, the, the proc that gives you the disable and the damage over time, ended up going off about 33 to 34 times in both of the runs here. So really really not as good of a performer as these things have been hyped to be and we'll take a look at a comparison like against the other types near the end of the video i just am including uh parse stuff here just to, to give some reference points next up we have advanced phasers these were the second place in the poll and for a very good reason the, these weapons are very expensive to get in order to unlock these weapons on your character, you have to get either the promo or legendary version of the Discovery uh, Constitution Flight Deck Carrier or the promo D7, the one that has the Rune of Our Enemies on it. So you have to get one of those three ships on your character in order to unlock these weapons. And once you have them, they have a special proc on them that is a 5% chance to go off. So it's it's much better than your standard weapon procs. And the proc is to give you a 60% or up to 60% crit severity boost for 15 seconds. And this is a crit severity boost specifically for these, these advanced beam rays. So this, these advanced phasers, they scale up based on how many are slotted. So if I go in game here, let me slot some of these on the build. If I slot just one and I hover over it, you see that the proc says it only gives 10% crit severity. If I slot another, that goes up to 20. And this caps out at six of these beams. So if I put six of these on, you will see that the proc on them is now at 60% crit severity. So the more of these advanced phasers you have on your build, the more potent they are. And especially if you have a really high crit chance number, like if you're doing something like surgical strikes, especially then the crit chance is going to be, or the, the, the crit severity from the proc is going to be fairly substantial. So as such, I'll tell you right now, like I, we don't even have to see the rest of the video to know that with the proc, these things have, if you have really high crit chance, or if you are doing like surgical strikes, these are without a doubt, like the best option for phasers. If you're doing beam arrays, because that proc is huge, especially when you have, you know, 80, 90% crit chance that that's a massive boost to severity there. Next up, we have pulse phasers. These were the third option or the third most selected option in the poll that I put out. And these are popular for the debuff proc that they have. So the issue here is that this is a 2.5% chance to go off. And the issue with the 2.5% chance proc here is that it can go off on a random target. You don't get to control when this, you know, when this proc goes off or what it goes off on. So the issue is, is that this debuff is actually potent while it's active. You know, it helps. But at the same time, if it goes on to like a Borg sphere that's at like 5% HP, you're not really getting much out of the proc. So it, it's these weapons did perform better than some of the other phasers that I tested, 
but not that much better. And one of the points I have here is that if you take anything away from this video, it should be that for the most part, weapon procs have a very minimal impact outside of a couple special ones like the advanced phasers. Next up, we have the obliviating phasers. These are the ones that just came out last week. And these are neat in that they have a 5% proc rate on them. And if that proc goes off, the shot that it goes off on will have 100% shield pen and 30 armor pen. This is okay, but these ended up being not that great performance wise in the test I did. I, I think they, they look cool. They have like the exact same visuals as the pulse phasers, however, which I can show you here in game real quick. So I'll put an obliviating phaser up front and then in the rear, I'll put a pulse phaser and let's fire them side by side to see how they look. So the, the sound and visual is basically the exact same. I have sound turned off right now, so you won't hear that, but you can see that they, they look basically the exact same. I don't even think the, the shade of like the, the orange is that much different. Maybe the pulse phaser is a little bit darker. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I think the pulse phaser is just a smidge darker. So it's basically a copy paste of the, uh, the visuals and sounds there, the pulse phasers. But, you know, with these things having a 5% proc rate, I was really not impressed with their performance and uh, the issue is just, you know, it's, it's again, it's just random um, and it's only impacting that one shot. Whenever this proc goes off, it's impacting that one single shot. So these actually performed worse than the pulse phasers because the pulse phasers, when the proc goes off on them, it's at least benefiting any other shots you have on that target for that duration. Next up, we have sensor linked and... These are popular because they have a different type of visual, which I can show you right now. They have a really neat blue animation. So let me just put two of those on. You see there, it's like a, almost like a cannon type effect and they have a nice impact when they hit the target also. So sensor linked are quite popular for the visuals and also because they get rid of the 2.5% chance proc on them for a static plus five to starship weapon amplification. So that's that ends up being plus 2% crit severity per sensor linked weapon slotted. So pretty good buff, but that crit severity boost is only boosting your weapons. Now for reference, I also included standard uh, phasers. Now these are also equivalent to the advanced fleet phasers that you could get from your starbase. And for those of you that are not understanding why that is the case, um, you know, advanced fleet phasers used to be the only way to get some like really nice ultra rare weapons back in the day. Uh, way back, the game did not have a crafting system like this. It also didn't have a re-engineering system or upgrade system. So advanced fleet weapons way back were the only way to, to get like, crit D to damage to on weapons and things like that. So nowadays we have the crafting system, which can do all that for us. So basically nowadays advanced fleet weapons are just character bound versions of crafted weapons that are also going to cost significantly more. So you're always better off nowadays to just get crafted weapons rather than the advanced fleet ones. And next up we have crafted phasers with pen. And with these pen weapons, you're trading off one modifier, in this case damage, for the pen mod. And the thing about pen is that it causes all shots with that weapon to have 10 armor pen. And that is really impactful, especially in an environment where you don't have a ton of debuffs. It is a huge boost. If we go back and look at the damage from some of these other situations like look at the standard crafted or fleet phasers here that's 38.45 million damage there and with the the phasers with pen 40.6 million 
Well, we'll take a closer look at all these numbers side by side here in a minute, but I just wanted to, to show and point out that these pen weapons had a fairly substantial performance increase over the other, th the other phasers. And I have some notes here about debuffs. Um, in a high debuff environment, these pen weapons may not be as impactful. Pen or damage resistance debuffs do have diminishing returns, basically. And there is going to be a point where if you are in a very debuff saturated run, where the pen modifier may not be as good. But most people are not in environments like that. Most people don't focus on debuffs much at all. I mean, look at how many people still run things like Attack Pattern Delta. Attack Pattern Delta is just clearly worse than Attack Pattern Beta because Beta is debuffing everything that your weapons hit. Delta is only debuffing things that shoot you. So there's already a lot of people that don't take advantage of the debuff potential out there by slotting things like Delta. And in environments like that, these pen weapons are going to be more useful for them. Now, here is everything side by side. And I have went through, you see that the crit chance does vary slightly for each of these. I've went through and normalized that. And what you see here is that the advanced phasers came out as the top option. However, the crafted phasers with the pen modifier are right there next to them. Like I would say that these two, the advanced phasers and the crafted pen weapons are basically tied with how close they are. And for everything else, you can see that everything else is about four to 5% behind, which doesn't really surprise me that much. The, the one thing that did surprise me was that sensor linked was not ahead of things like pulse phasers. I was really surprised by those results there. And the Agony stuff, like I mentioned at the start, um, I expected Agony to do better, but I ended up retesting it halfway through the test because the numbers were just so much lower from it that I was worried that something went wrong. But you can see here, it's not the case. The Agonies just did not do that good. And we see that these weapons that have a debuff on them of some sort typically do better with the exception of the obliviating, which just the, the issue is again, like I said, it's the, the, when the proc does go off, even though it's 5%, it's only impacting a single shot. So it just doesn't have that much punch to it. So if I was ranking these here, the, the ranking would be advanced, then crafted with pen, then pulse, sensor linked, agony, obliviating, and a standard or the advanced fleet would be would be the order. And as I've already said, the advanced and crafted pen weapons are basically tied. But if you are in a build where you are near 100% crit chance, the advanced should should really take the lead. If you're on a build where your crit chance is substantially lower, then crafted pen would probably be a better option. And the great thing about crafted pen is how easy they are to get. Like if you're a brand new player to this game and you're watching this video, if you want to craft any of these pen weapons, they're, they're some of the easiest things you can possibly get. You go and get them at a Mark II level and you just spam craft them until you get like a full set of these pen beams. Like right there, I just did a couple of these and spent just a thousand DC or like a couple thousand EC worth of materials at most. And I got two pen weapons right there. So like that, that's super easy to, to obtain. And then once you have that, you can go through and upgrade it up to uh, Mark 15. And if you follow my upgrade guide that I did about a year and a half back, you'll have an easy way to try and get the, the beams to Epic along the way to 15. But you can go through and just spam spam craft a ton of these pen beams and get them up to 15 really cheap. So that's a really, really great, great find there. I feel is the, the crafted pen. A lot of people have been sleeping on those or just have felt that they have fallen out of the meta. But I think that this test shows that crafted pen is still good and it is so easily accessible for a brand new free to play player that it just, 
it, it's crazy that one of the best options is still those crafted pen weapons. And as I'd mentioned on the pulse phaser slide, you know, the one of the big takeaways here is that there's not much of a difference between most of the phaser types or most most damage types, you know, where it's just 2.5% chance proc. So if you don't want to go with crafted pen phasers or the advanced phasers, then you basically just pick whatever color of phasers you like the most because the differences are going to be that big. And I already mentioned if you're doing like surgical strikes or you have really high crit chance, then advanced phasers are going to be the winner. If you don't have really high crit chance, if you're if you're under 50% crit chance, I'd probably just go with the crafted pen. But that is pretty much it. You know, is this is this what you guys expected? Did you guys expect like I think the advanced phasers isn't really that much of a surprise to people. But did you expect crafted pen weapons to be this competitive? I I sh certainly did not. I'll I'll be honest. Like I knew pen was still good, but I just I didn't expect it to be holding up this well in this test now. Like I said, this was a very low debuff environment, and Pen would not be as impactful in a very high debuff environment, but like like I also said, the reality is is that most of you don't play in a high debuff environment, so Pen is going to be very beneficial. But that is going to be it for today. Let me know what you guys think. You know, were, were your predictions accurate, or are you surprised by the results? And are you disappointed that Agony is not as good as it's been hyped up to be? But that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching, and see you guys next time.